Hi, I'm Alistair, and in a recent video I described how I use a 3D printer to create components for an escape room game. Now, in that video I said that I don't normally 3D print full puzzles for use in a game, but there are times when actually 3D printing is a great way of manufacturing certain types of puzzles that would be really hard to create any other way. And in this video I want to give you one example of that, which is these um, 3D printed optical illusion blocks. So um, when looked at uh, from this point of view you can see the numbers 7 and 1, but if I rotate to show you a different point of view I've got 3 and 4, or from this side I've got uh, 5 and 2, or 2 and 5. Now to create an object that has um, you know different silhouettes in all three dimensions uh, I actually did that by hand and just wrote the code in OpenSCAD that would generate those illusions. But I then did find a script that someone else had written which is um, takes a more programmatic approach. So here I've got um, the numbers 839 and I can turn that into any equivalent four digit character um, four digit string or number at all. Um, so I wanted to, to share with you the code which I, which I found which will let you do that. So you could transpose any two words into each other or a set of numbers into words or numbers into other numbers and I think that would be a really good basis for many escape room puzzles. Uh, so here is the code that generated that model in OpenSCAD. So you can see the preview here looks um, exactly as it does uh, unsurprisingly when you print it out for the real thing. And um, the code is not too long. Um, so basically you define your two strings that you want to be displayed on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Um, they obviously need to be the same length because each one of these will be paired with the corresponding character in this string here and then a letter block will be created containing uh, the intersection of those two letters. Um, so you just define what your strings are going to be, uh, they can be whatever length they want so long as they're the same. And if you wanted to um, you know, try this code for yourself that's really the only change you need to make. But just to explain what actually happens on the rest of it, so we've got some uh, parameters which you can configure here that depend on how far the letters are spaced away from each other, um, whether they are stretched, the spacing between them, things like that. Um, this is based on using a, a font called Overpass Mono, um, which is a sort of a nice chunky font, so it has enough intersection that, that you probably will get a structurally sound model. Um, but you might want to experiment with other fonts. If you've got a particular letter combination that sort of doesn't seem to work very well, you might find it works better with a different sort of, of font, things like that. Uh, and then uh, these parameters here are just all based on that font to sort of uh, make the letters appear at a nice scale with a nice spacing. You can actually include uh, special characters as well, so things like asterisks, uh, ampersands, things like that. Um, so they're included in an array here which is added to the the normal range of printable characters and because special characters typically uh, have different spacing between them than alphabetical characters or numeric characters um, there are some special arrays here that have the corresponding spacing for each of these characters so again you can kind of ignore that if you're using if you're not using special characters but if you are um, you could add in some custom spacing to make sure that things appear correctly there and then um, in the code itself there's basically uh, two functions so we've got uh, the thing at the bottom that simply calls double letter string and double letter string is here uh, so what we do is we calculate how long the uh, the strings are that we're using and we uh, loop over each of the characters in both strings and we translate by whatever the letter spacing is so we're moving along the the base of the block here and we call this double letter block function passing in the ith character from the first string and the ith character from the second string. So in this case that's going to be calling it with h and e because that's our first letter block here. Um, and then to create the letter block of those two letters that's what this module here does. Um, so it's actually it's it's relatively simple really. Um, first of all we find out whether either of those two letters is uh, in that special characters array. So if it was one of these strange characters at the top here that needs a special spacing 
And if it is, we'll retrieve the corresponding scale and shift from this array here. We'll do that for both letter one and letter two. Um, and then what we do is we create, first of all, we create a full size cube. So imagine kind of a sculptor that's starting with a, a big block of marble. That's what we're, we're doing here. So we'll create a full size block around uh, kind of encasing all of the letters on both sides. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, look at letter one. So the one that's uh, in this plane, first of all, in this axis. And we'll create the intersection of this full size marble block with the extrusion of the letter in this. So we'll make an H, we'll extrude it in uh, this uh, axis here, and we'll find all the points where that intersects with the, with the full size marble block. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same with the second letter here. So we rotate by 90 degrees in the, the Y axis, so we're looking at it from this direction. And then again, we'll extrude our second letter all the way in this axis and work out where it intersects with the marble block and with the extrusion from the first letter. And what we have when we've done all of those things is we have this um, sort of block here that represents the intersection of all those points. Um, so in theory, you can do this with any um, pair of numbers and letters. Like I say, some work better than others, um, depending on whether they are you know, top heavy characters or if they're bottom heavy characters. Um, but uh, if you find that you're trying to get a particular uh, combination that doesn't work very well, what you might want to do is experiment with specifying a different font up here or tweaking some of these settings. Um, but other than that, that's, uh, that's it. And you can, um, you can just click print, place it on a base here just to keep it um, solid. Um, and that base is created in this section here. Um, and then you've got your optical illusion all ready to go.